Greetings and welcome to another Diablo 2 Resurrected video. Today I want to show you the Summon Necromancer on a budget build. And for that, let's get right into the skills. I've put in 20 into Ray Skeleton, 20 into Skeleton Mastery, 1 into Skeleton Mage, and all the way down 1 into Revive. It's not really necessary, but if you want, you can have some revives with you. Then around 18 to Clay Column, you can max it out, of course, if you have more points or if you're leveling up and have more points then. And one into Summon Resist. For the Poison and Bone Tree, I have one into Teeth to get to Corpse Explosion and put in 20 points in there to raise my radius. This will be your number one skill after one or two monsters die and you can just Corpse Explosion and everything else will fall down pretty quickly. As for Curses, I put in around 10 points into Amplify Damage to further enhance its radius, which makes it a little bit more convenient to cast. Since we don't have much plus skills, it's um, yeah very nice to put uh, a few points in it. You can also go down to Decrepify if you like for bosses, for example, but I decided to just go with Amplify Damage this time. Going over the gear, I have a Spirit in a Crystal Sword, I have a Lore Helmet, I have a rare amulet with 1 to necromancer skills and 10 all resist. I have a rhyme shield. You can also, of course, use a spirit shield or humunculus, so the necromancer unique shield. But this is a, a very budget option that you can easily get uh, already in Nightmare. Uh, I have a smoke rune word. I have a infernal strides. You can also go with any rare or blue boots. Just something that gives you faster run walk. I have a rare ring with 10 faster cast rate and a little bit of resistances. I have a rare belt with life and resistances on it. I have another ring with resistances on it. And I have Trangul's Claws for the faster cast rate. You can also go with Mage Fist or with something else with resistances or something. The faster cast rate is nice, but it's not really mandatory for this build. You will be able to like cast your summons faster or cast corpse explosion faster but again it's not mandatory it's just a little bit smoother so going over the stats i have enough strength to equip my gear and the rest into vitality i have a nice resistances overall i could have a bit more lightning resistance which would be nice but this is all right and also we are in budget gear so if you find more lightning resisting like charms or something like that just keep them, they will be very helpful. As you can see, I have a faster cast rate of 65%, which puts us at the 48 Bray point, I believe it is. So if you find like 10% more FCR, for, for example, on a ring, then you would have a 75%, which is the 10 frame break point, which is pretty nice. But again, it's not that important. Lastly, my mercenary, he has a pressure with an insight in it and of course you want this to be ethereal at best but an ethereal pressure is pretty expensive and a normal pressure can be found on your own you can also put this in any other base it's just very nice to have the inside aura of the meditation also your mercenary damage kind of matters because you want the first kill of a monster to happen very quickly so you can use corpse explosion and it goes more quickly if you're mercenary does good damage so keep an eye out for that um, try to find a base or something uh, that does good damage it does not have to be an insight it's just convenient so you don't have to use as many mana potions also i gave him a treachery and a tell rusher's mask for the resistances and lifestorm paid it's a might mercenary which boosts the damage of the mercenary itself and also of your summons which is pretty nice. So let's jump into some gameplay. And again, firstly, uh, just to showcase a little bit how much damage the Necromancer does, uh, let's go to Eldritch and Shank. And of course, at start, you don't have any summons. You can summon your Golem, but for anything else like your skeletons, you need some corpses. Here's one corpse. And what you want to do is curse for amplify damage and then corpse explosion and as you can see 
In this case, we didn't even need all our summons, but now we have enough corpses to summon them. And I think it's around uh, it's 10 skeletons. Let me see. Yeah, I have a total of 10 skeletons. And I also could spawn like three skeleton magis, but they're not very, yeah, very good. They don't do a lot of damage, but if you want, you can have a little bit of an army here. And the most important part is cursing amplify damage. Because your summons do more damage, your mercenary does more damage, and your corpse explosion will do more damage. Because corpse explosion is in part fire damage, and in another part physical damage. And the physical damage part will get boosted up by amplify damage. Also in my second weapon slot I have a teleport staff, uh, which is pretty important. On this character because you want to reposition your summons ever so often like this and they all stack on top of you and you can what we call telestomp so you teleport onto the enemies and your summons will immediately attack everything in close proximity and then again you use corpse explosion which has a nice radius and kill everything that's there so that was Elgin and Shank. let's move over to the cow level so for the cow level it's pretty straightforward and you will have a good time in here and it's probably one of the safest if not the safest build to do cow level because it's an open area you can just lay back use your summons the tank for you and again, as soon as one of these cows die, you can use Corpse Explosion and does massive amounts of damage. Be sure to recast your summons if they go down. You can also have some revived cows here. And if you like, you can teleport and use it to reposition your summoning. The problem with uh, Skeleton Magi is that they might spawn with cold damage, and cold damage uh, sometimes lets the corpses explode when the monster dies, and then you can't use your corpse explosion, so that's unfortunate. So I would advise to either resummon mages until they don't roll cold. So I have three colds here, now I have poison, I have lightning and fire. I have three mages and none of them has cold damage, which is pretty nice. But you don't really need the skeleton magis, because they are not doing a lot of damage. So these were some champions here. And see the range of corpse explosion is not high enough for here, but now one of the cows died, and sometimes you have to wait a little bit until you can use Corpse Explosion. See if we can find a nice large group like this. And what also happens if you swap your weapon to the teleport staff is that you lose plus skills because you're not wearing spirit, for example, at the time. and some of your summons will perish then. As you can see now I have 9 skeletons and 3 revived because I switched to the teleport staff. Like if I'm on my main hand I can have 10 skeletons and as soon as I switch one skeleton will die because I don't have the plus skills for 10 skeletons anymore. This is a pretty pretty safe build as long as you don't teleport into anything dangerous so take care if you're teleporting around uh, it would be better to not teleport at all only if you know it's very safe to do so so that was the summon necromancer a very safe build a very fun build because of the corpse explosion which just blows up everything in its range so do keep that in mind that you are 
uh, wanting to max out Corpse Explosion. And yeah, you can play this build on a budget. You can play this build almost naked, to be honest. Um, the big thing is to give your mercenary a little bit of gear because you are relying on that first kill. And your summons don't do that much damage, but your mercenary does uh, a good amount of damage to help you get that first kill. So that's the summon Necromancer. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing. There will be more budget builds to come. Until then, good luck, have fun. Goodbye.